Good morning. And welcome to the change of command and retirement ceremony for Admiral James Frank Colwell, Jr., Director of Naval Reactors. Admiral Colwell will be relieved by Admiral Bill Houston. Traditions of our modern Navy trace their origins from age old, of old customs and laws of the sea. Little has changed over the years for the ceremony you will witness today because of the richness of their heritage. The change of office ceremony formally passes all duties, burdens, and privileges of command from the outgoing officer to his relief. The heart of the ceremony is a formal reading of official orders by the officer to be relieved and the relieving officer. The authority and responsibility of command passes absolutely upon utterance by the relieving officer, I relieve you, sir. The officer being relieved responds, I stand relieved. A significant portion of the admiral's responsibilities are prescribed by executive order and fall under the Department of Energy Authority. Please take this opportunity to verify that all the electronic devices are silenced for the ceremony. Military guests are, may remain uncovered for the ceremony. Post the side boys. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the presentation of colors, our national anthem, and the invocation. Guests are invited to sing the national anthem. Admiral, United States Navy, arriving. Naval reactors arriving. <laughs> Naval operations arriving. Energy, question, Navy, arriving. <laughs> Energy, arriving. Bosun, retire the side boys. Advance the colors. Go forward, forward. Clap and quest and salute.
Ladies and gentlemen, the National Anthem, led by the U.S. Navy Band Brass Quartet. Retire the colors. Platform guest, order, arms. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Bennett Stanford will offer the invocation. Let us pray. Lord God, we call upon you today to bless this time-honored ceremony as we witness the transfer of command from Admiral Caldwell to Admiral Houston. Today, we want to lift up and honor the distinguished service of Admiral Caldwell. Since his graduation from the Naval Academy in 1981, he has been dedicated to the advancement of the submarine community, the Navy, and the larger military organization throughout his years. And now, after more than eight years in his current position as Director Naval Reactors, it is finally time for a well-deserved retirement. I pray for your blessings, grace, and peace to be upon him and his wife, Kim, as they move into this new stage of life together. And now I ask that you grant wisdom, courage, and strength to Admiral Houston as he comes to this position from Naval Submarine Forces. He clearly brings a wealth of knowledge and experience to this new position of leadership, but I ask that you will also grant him humility and grace as he leads those under his authority. Be especially with Colleen, Emily, and Lauren as they support him in this new and demanding leadership role. Much will be asked of him, and much will be taken from them. So I entrust the entire Houston family into your loving care over the coming years. Now, Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. Be with each person gathered here today to witness this change of command. And in your mercy, we pray. Amen. Amen. Guests, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Director of Naval Rackers, Admiral Frank Caldwell. Well, good morning, everyone. How did everyone get in here? <laughs> hey, uh, thank you all for being here. It is great to see everyone. Welcome especially to the Caldwell and Houston uh, families and friends. This is a big day for all of us. And we're here to celebrate and have some fun. What do you think about this venue here in the Naval Reactors headquarters? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I recently spoke at a uh, flag promotion ceremony uh, for a new admiral, and I remarked that being in the flag wardroom was like being on a fast-moving train. You never know how many stops you're going to make or when those stops are going to occur or how long you'll be on that train, and as I discovered recently, if you can even get off of the train. <laughs> that fast-moving train is slowing down today for just a little bit, and Kim and I are going to jump off and Bill and Colleen will jump on with many, many exciting destinations ahead. 
Bill was confirmed on the 20th of December, if I remember that correctly. Then he showed up here for turnover on the 21st. Since then, we've celebrated the holidays, we've celebrated New Year's, we've turned over command, Bill turned over command of the submarine force in the, uh, in the Atlantic and the entire force. We took a little leave, I signed a couple hundred fit reps, and here we are today. <laughs> now after turnover, Bill, that train is gonna pick right up, right? You know that, right? And uh, the business of naval reactors continues. So Bill, in the next four weeks, Bill will head to Charleston, he'll head to Japan and Guam, he'll head to Saratoga Springs and Schenectady, and head out on sea trials with our newest fast attack submarine. There is no rest for the weary here. It is gonna be fast moving and it is gonna be exciting. And it is gonna be a great ride for you, Colleen and Bill. Congratulations to you and your family. This is a big day. And ladies and gentlemen, this is our newest four-star admiral in the US Navy. So happens that we have the second newest uh, four-star admiral in the Navy as well, too, Jim Kirby, right here. He just made it a, last week. So in the last 20 days, the Naval Reactors Headquarters team has leaned into this ceremony. I want to thank everybody that's been involved, especially our MC, Captain Chris Carter, and uh, Mr. Ed Harrington, who's been involved, David Gilmer in the front office, I know he's been, uh, you know, I would say he's pulling his hair out, but he has no hair. He has a good haircut like me and Bill. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Lindsey Brock and many, many others. I also want to say thanks to the fantastic Navy band. Round of applause for the band. <laughs> the band knows how I feel about you, right? I am your biggest fan. I never miss a chance to attend, nor should you. We really appreciate you being here. Ladies and gentlemen, these are world-class musicians that do amazing work for us. And call us anytime and Kim and I will be out there to lead the dancing. <laughs> hey, we have a number of special guests, so Bill and I want to welcome uh, all these guests today. I'm going to introduce Secretary Granholm, Secretary Del Toro, the CNO, and Admiral Frank Hetty uh, in a little bit here. But there are several members of the President's National Security Team. Mr. Kurt Campbell was supposed to make it. He didn't make it, but he's here in thought. Mr. Dr. Jim Miller, the lead for all the AUKUS work for the president. Mr. Caleb Redden and Ms. Monica Ayler. Monica's actually one of us. Don't forget about that. <laughs> Mr. Abe Denmark is here. He was the SecDef's lead for the AUKUS consultation period. From the National Nuclear Security Administration, my very good friend, the administrator, Jill Ruby. Jill has been fantastic. From Capitol Hill, uh, Representative Joe Courtney. We call him Two Sub Joe. <laughs> he wants to be Three Sub Joe, and I'm right along with you, sir, okay? <laughs> and from across the hill, several professional staff members, all these great folks, the fourth director of Naval Reactors, Admiral Skip Bowman. Admiral Bowman, good to see you, sir. Welcome. Uh, Admiral Retired Meese, former STRATCOM commander. Admiral Retired Bill Lesher, former VCNO. Admiral Retired Jamie Fogo, classmate, and his wife, Cindy. Admiral Daryl Caudill and Donna, my very good friends. Admiral Jim Kilby and Ivy have already said uh, welcome them, but welcome again. My USNA 8th Company classmates and my classmates from class of 1981. They're all over. Good to see you. Now, we have many distinguished flag officers and executives and industry leaders. Our UK and Australian colleagues are here. I saw the second Sea Lord. Where are you, sir? Okay, uh, he's a Chelsea fan. Don't hold it against him. Tottenham is doing much better. Martin, it's so good to see you, and thanks for your friendship. Welcome to all of you, and thank you for being here. This is about having fun today, and I really want to have some fun. Hey, our first guest speaker is the Secretary of Energy, Ms. Ms. J uh, Jennifer Granholm. I have had the privilege of working for four different secretaries of energy, and they have all been fantastic. I think that many Americans don't really appreciate the incredible role that the Department of Energy plays in our national defense. The Department of Energy National Laboratories are the brain trust of technology and innovation. They are indeed a national treasure. From certifying uh, the nuclear stockpile, which in itself is an amazing story, incredible technology and incredible expertise, 
to computing and cyber and energy, the work that goes on in our national laboratories is really cutting edge. At Naval Reactors, we are super proud to be part of the Department of Energy and NNSA. In fact, we have four Department of Energy sites that support the Naval Reactors program. The Bettis site in Pittsburgh, the Knowles Atomic Power Laboratory in Schenectady, the Kessel Ring site in Boston Spa, New York, and the Naval Reactors facility in Idaho. These are world-class facilities, and I mean that in the truest sense. We hire some amazing people to work there. We call them collective, collectively the Naval Nuclear Laboratory, and they are absolutely vital to everything that we do here at Naval Reactors. Now at Naval Reactors, we have enjoyed an incredible relationship with the Department of Energy, and that relationship starts right at the top with the tone set by the Secretary. I have had the pleasure to work with her on a number of issues and a range of issues. She has consistently voiced her unwavering support for our program. Secretary Granholm has also a very distinguished career uh, as a public servant, and in leadership roles, she has been the Michigan's uh, Attorney General. She has served two terms as the Governor of Michigan. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our 16th Secretary of Energy, the Honorable Jennifer Granholm. Thank you, Admiral. So great to be here. When you said you had the pleasure of working with four energy secretaries, I knew you were going to say, but I'm the best, right? right. <laughs> the most supportive of the Naval Reactors program. Well, I am certainly honored to be here to help celebrate your phenomenal career, capped off, of course, by these eight highly successful years as director of the Office of Naval Reactors. Um, I also want to thank Secretary Del Toro and Admiral Franchetti as well for the great partnership that the Department of Energy uh, has in this program. I'm, I'm sure that some of you know that Naval Reactors, as uh, the Admiral said, is um, you know a, a partnership between uh, obviously the U.S. Navy and the Department of Energy, and it goes back. You know, Admiral Rickover, who f was the one who first proposed this sort of marriage between the Navy and the Department of Energy, back when the Department of Energy was the Atomic Energy Commission. And the idea was that there would be this joint management of naval reactors. And at the time, it was a really unorthodox idea. And if you've ever worked in government, which I know many of you have, the notion of uh, two different offices working together seamlessly is, um, you know, it's a, a challenge. So. And, of course, Admiral Rickover was not exactly known for worrying too much about the organizational chart. In fact, I'm sure some of you know, at one point, the Defense Department asked him to submit an org chart for naval reactors, and he responded by sending them back a page of Chinese characters. So, <laughs> but that willingness to think outside the box uh, has really caused the naval reactors program to thrive over the past 75 years. Uh, and I will say this program's enduring success has, is a testament to the thousands of professionals who have worked on it. Uh, and to make this vision that Admiral Rick over had, that, that the Naval Reactors Program would be the third leg of the nuclear triad and that it would be making us as a nation uh, secure and that the triad itself would be safe and effective. So gratitude all around to how the Naval Reactors team cooperates day in and day out with our national lab, um, our NNSA, Jill Ruby here, our other teammates at, at DOE, and of course with the Navy overall, and our partners around the world, evidenced by uh, those who are here from the Australia program. Um, so for the past eight years, Admiral Caldwell, has you know modeled this notion of team spirit and and the vision that has made the reactors so successful. When you when you ask Admiral Caldwell, Caldwell's colleagues about him, they all mention the same few qualities. First, of course, his love of dad jokes. <laughs> Second, his deep integrity and humility, and most of all his incredible ability to connect with people. You know, it's a leader who's been known to show up at sporting uh, events when a staff member's child is playing. 
at award and promotion ceremonies. He makes sure to invite the honorees, family, and friends to meet with them, to remember the smallest of details. You all know, officers in this program know, that he has interviewed every single one of you, which is astounding, over 5,500 interviews, and is known to send letters to family members and those who have, um, and to thank them, to thank those family members for inspiring the service that the officer is providing. That is amazing. And then in this organization that can really focus on technical uh, details, very important, Admiral Caldwell is also always thinking about the people. There's one submarine officer, for example, who remembers meeting with him shortly before taking command of a sub squadron, and he assumed that the conversation when they met would be more about tactics and process, but he was surprised to hear that Admiral Caldwell told him, focus on the submarine crews. It's the people, he said, that I need you to lead and to mentor. And of course, the officer never forgot that advice, and his Admiral Caldwell's leadership actually mirrors what one of, one of his favorite quotes from Admiral Rickover, which is people, not organizations, get things done. So uh, you've gotten a lot done, you know, the Ford class aircraft carrier, the 10 Virginia class submarines begun construction on the Columbia ballistic missile submarine. Of course, the AUKUS partnership, so much has been accomplished. And I just want to say thank you on behalf of 330 million Americans for your leadership, whether they know you or not. You have been amazing. <laughs> and I could not um, depart the podium without saying thank you to Kim as well. Um, obviously, they have known each other since they were two years old. Insane. They met, uh, they um, uh, got married three days after he graduated from the Naval Academy. So you have <laughs> literally been uh, side by side on this joint journey uh, for your entire lives. And what an amazing thing that is. And then I want to welcome Admiral Houston. Very exciting. <laughs> Thrilled to see you. I was thrilled to see you finally take the helm. I'm sure you are as, as well, Colleen. Uh, it's going to be a great ride. You are one of our military's finest submarine officers and exemplar of the silent service. And um, although you should know, as a Notre Dame grad, your whole family's Notre Dame, um, working with a former Michigan governor. You're going to get grief for me during the, the football season, assuming that we play. We may not be, but all I can say is go blue. Um, and me, Madam Secretary. And you too. Yes. All right. Love it. So you are working with an incredible team, as you can see. You are passing off this incredible team. And I just want to thank everybody here for their camaraderie, their cooperation as we work to strengthen our nuclear fleet, to strengthen our deterrence against conflict, to uphold non-proliferation around the world. Thank you all for keeping us safe. Now, the beauty of being the MC in the heart of the ceremony is I get to come in on top of those and, and clarify some things. <laughs> It was an arranged marriage. <laughs> and dad jokes, yes. I heard a really good one the other day. Uh, one guy, I asked the gentleman, what do you do in retirement? He says, I do absolutely nothing. And it usually takes me to, till 5 o'clock in the afternoon to finish that. <laughs> Sounds right up my alley. Uh, Madam Secretary, thank you so much. It's such a privilege and honor to work with you. Really, thank you for being here. Hey, our next speaker is a fellow Naval Academy graduate from the great class of 1983. Wow. He's an accomplished Naval officer and the fourth Secretary of Energy that I have worked for. His service in the Navy included command of USS Bulkley, DDG-84, 
He holds multiple master's degrees. He's an accomplished businessman, and his counterpart, Betty, is here as well. Betty, good to see you today. Thank you so much for being here. Such an honor. You're a leader in our flag wardroom. We really love being associated with you. Thank you so much for everything that you've done to support your husband as well. He is one of, Admiral, um, or I'm sorry, Secretary Del Toro is one of the sharpest people I know. On my first trip with him, we went to electric boat, and I had the privilege of riding with him on his plane. And on the way up, he asked about electric boat and how they were doing. I gave him six or seven things to talk about or think about, and he didn't take any notes. And as we walked around the shipyard, I heard all six or seven of those things come back, and they were verbatim. And I remember thinking, mental note to self, I better pay attention to what I tell him. <laughs> <laughs> also on that flight, I had a hectic day, and I had not had lunch, and the secretary had a Subway sandwich or something. And he said, would you want half of this? And, and I said, sure. And I realized he's just a really good person. So I really appreciate your leadership, sir. <laughs> Uh, his strong leadership has been essential in making the president's vision for the Trilateral AUKUS Summit a reality. He's been involved in the thick of that. One of the biggest honors I think I've had in that whole uh, scenario, sir, was the dinner you hosted in San Diego with the three chiefs of Navy, me, and a few select other individuals. It was a phenomenal, phenomenal evening. Like those of us in the room, he believes in the power and value of a strong U.S. Navy, and he loves sailors and people. He is exactly the right person to lead our Navy in what I consider to be one of the most pivotal times in our history. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our 78th Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Carlos Del Toro. Sometimes I'm not quite sure where to begin. There are so many things that need to be said today, but I, I promise to be brief. Uh, but let me begin by um, thanking you, thanking my president, thanking you, the American people, for the privilege to serve as your Secretary of the Navy. Particularly over this past four weeks, it has been a tremendous honor to watch our fleet and our force in action. And just as yesterday as I stood in the battle watch of the Pentagon, watching our surface Navy bat battle back 21 UAVs, three anti-ship cruise missiles um, sent in our direction. I could not be prouder of the Navy that you, Madam CNO, have led in the time that you've been Vice CNO and CNO, and even during your time on the Joint Staff, teaching our Navy to be joint and not just blue. And I think it's all been seen here in fruition over these past four weeks. There's much for all of us to be proud of. And I just wanted to say that before I actually begin my formal comments. I also want to apologize for being a few minutes late. I want to thank my driver for getting me here for in about 10 minutes from the Pentagon. Uh, although Admiral Rickover wouldn't be pleased by the fact that I was late, I was fighting for dollars in the Pentagon <laughs> with a very senior member of Congress uh, having breakfast with him. And uh, I can tell every time I come to Navy reactors, it's a very strategic visit. And I can't help but notice that my wife is sitting next to Congress Chairman Courtney. Um, I know that Betty was briefed on exactly what to say to him, uh, to ask more for more dollars for our Navy and Marine Corps, and particularly for the submarine force. Sir, we're still where the power I know, I know. It's it's very pleasing to see this. So, so good morning to all of you. It's an absolute honor to be with you today here at Naval Reactors at the Washington Navy Yard. I feel that today of all days, it's appropriate for me to begin my remarks with a quote from the father of naval nuclear power, Admiral Hyman Rickover. When doing a job, any job, one must feel that he owns it and act as though he will remain in that job forever, unquote. And Admiral Caldwell, I'm a bit disappointed with you this morning, please. Speaking of bad jokes, um, I had usually used the restroom before the long speeches. And what was on Admiral Caldwell's door going into the bathroom? A t shirt that says dad on it. And here I thought I was your dad. Very inappropriate. 
sorry, I know that was com probably a complete break with protocol, but nevertheless. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, for only the seventh time in our Navy's history, we are gathered to witness the transfer of command of naval reactors and the responsibilities of the Department of Energy's NSA Deputy Administrator for Naval Reactors, a billet that requires its incumbent to lead our naval nuclear power program for eight years without relief. Secretary Granholm, Administrator Ruby, thank you both for joining us this morning. We greatly value our strong relationship between the Navy and the Department of Energy. We know how critically important it is for the safety of all our ships around the globe. And we can't thank you enough for your leadership. Also want to, again, seriously thank Chairman Courtney for his leadership of our Navy and Marine Corps and your support on Capitol Hill. There is no stronger supporter of our Navy nuclear power program, and there just aren't enough ways to say thanks. Also want to extend my thanks again to Admiral Franchetti and Admiral Kilby. I've already mentioned how proud I am of your leadership of our Navy, along with Admiral Cottle as well too, who is here, our Fleet Forces Commander. And one just simply cannot say enough things for what you have invested in over the time of your naval careers to make our Navy today as strong and powerful as it is as demonstrated in the Red Sea. I also need to extend, as much as this is hard to do sometimes, a welcome to the great class of 1981. You did say that I was from the great class of 1983, so I will reciprocate by saying that. You know, when I first met Admiral Caldwell in my office, it was a daunting moment for me as an electrical engineer coming out of the Naval Academy and having retired as a commander and uh, having the head of the nuclear power program there. One of the very first questions I asked him was, did he ever yell at me in Bancroft Hall? <laughs> he attested to the fact that he hadn't, and yet I still remember being yelled at a lot when I was there, but <laughs> no other officers seemed to admit that they yelled at me when I was at the Naval Academy. But I also want to welcome the friends and families of Admiral Caldwell and Admiral Houston. Welcome and thank you for your support of these two dedicated, devoted Naval officers. Admiral Caldwell and Admiral Houston are part of a small, very storied club of leaders in our Navy, dating back to 75 years to the first director of Naval Reactors, Admiral Rickover. And we are grateful also for the presence of Admiral Bowman, one of my mentors growing up in the Navy as well too, uh, and your leadership. And we thank you for being here today at the ceremony. But as we know, it takes more than just one person to realize success. In this case, with success being defined as, I quote, hot rocks making steam, unquote, safely and efficiently, most importantly. Since Commander Wilkinson announced to the world in 1955 that the USS Nautilus, SSN 571, was underway on nuclear power, the team here at Naval Reactors has ensured our nation's nuclear fleet has remained underway around the globe, both on and under the ocean's surface. As we look back over the past eight years, the work of the Navy nuclear reactors team in support of our Navy nuclear propulsion program has been absolutely incredible, especially in engagements with our international partners and allies. By maintaining their impeccable safety record, our nuclear fleet continues to enjoy access to ports in over 50 countries around the globe, allowing our aircraft carriers and submarines to make port calls and resupply during deployments. And all of you who have served in submarines, those of you who have served in the Navy, know how critically important that is to our national security. Their efforts continue to enable a key naval relationship with Japan, allowing us to forward deploy a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier overseas, which is vital to ensuring a free and open Indo-Pacific region for ourselves, our partners, and our allies. And I did visit the Ronald Reagan during my very first few months as Secretary of the Navy in Yokosuka, Naval Reactors is also supporting our British allies in the design, build, and test of the propulsion plan for their next generation of nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines, the Dreadnought class, SSBN, modernizing their undersea nuclear deterrent at the same time as we pursue our own modernization effort with the Columbia class, SSBN. And along with the United Kingdom, we are now partnering with Australia. 
As part of the AUKUS security agreement, a, general, a generational commitment by all three of our nations designed to promote our collective security. And yes, that evening was a very special evening, wasn't it? Under AUKUS, we are sharing our nuclear propulsion technology for only the second time in our nation's history and represents the largest international nuclear propulsion technology sharing agreement in the past 65 years. Naval Reactors has and will continue to play a pivotal role in developing our Australian allies' technical capabilities, ensuring that they are able to safely and effectively operate their own nuclear-powered submarine fleets. And perhaps, Admiral Houston, I'll say to you what the National Security Advisor said to me when we were actually closing out the initial agreement after the first 18 months of negotiations in Point Loma, California. He said, Carlos, you've done a great job throughout the negotiations. Now don't screw it up the rest of the way. <laughs> so I leave you with that word's wisdom as well, too. <laughs> or we will both be in the office of the National Security Advisor. Each of these efforts are monumental. And the team at Naval Reactors, the engineers, the scientists, the researchers, the technical advisors and support personnel, all of you in the rafters, all of you in the rafters, and throughout the country, you are the key to realizing the outcomes that we desire. While the director of NR is the face of the organization, none of its successes would be possible without the thousands of Americans from all walks of life who dedicate themselves day in and day out to the cause of naval nuclear power. In recognition today of your many accomplishments over the last eight years, I am personally pleased to announce that we will be awarding this extraordinary group of professionals throughout the entire enterprise the Navy Unit Commendation. And while, and while it might be easy for me to take the credit for it because I have the authority to do it, I assure you that it was Admiral Caldwell who from a long time ago insisted and lobbied me to death. But of course, it was an easy decision for me to make based on his recommendations and his acknowledgement of the hard work that you've done to receive this Navy unit commendation. So to the team here at Naval Reactors, thank you. Thank you for everything that you do in support of our sailors, their families, and indeed our nation to ensure our security and prosperity. Now, before I turn the podium over to Admiral Caldwell, I also want to take a few moments to recognize, the, indeed, the most important guest with us here this morning. No offense, Chairman Courtney. Uh, the families of Admiral Caldwell and Admiral Houston. To the Houston family first, Colleen, Lauren, Emily, allow me to be amongst the first to welcome you again back to the Naval Reactors team. Not that you really truly left. For decades, you have stood by your husband and father during deployments, period of separations, and long days in the office while on shore duty. Your patience, grace, and love for Admiral Houston are evident, and we cannot thank you enough for your steadfast support as he continues to serve our nation as the new director of Naval Reactors with more continued long, very exciting journeys and many meetings in my office too, Admiral Houston. To John and Norma, Paul and Andy, thank you for your presence here today to witness a special moment for your brother and your brother-in-law's career. Mrs. Cynthia Houston, Mumsy, where are you, Mumsy? I have no doubt you are proud of your son. As he reaches the pinnacle of his career, we recognize that we would not be here without your love and guidance of Admiral Houston during his formative years. Serving in our Navy is indeed a family affair and you have all made the tremendous sacrifice in support of Admiral Houston over the past 33 years. To the several members and friends of the Caldwell family, thank you for joining us this morning as well. We are fortunate to have Admiral Caldwell's siblings with us today in support of their brother. Mrs. Jean Furry, her husband John, and their sons Aiden and Donovan. Mr. Andy Caldwell, who I will also point out, Andy, there you are, who I will also point out is a a fellow member of the greatest class of 1983 and decided to join the Marine Corps instead of the Navy like his father and brothers and his wife Josie. Thank you Andy for being here. And Commander David Caldwell as well. To Admiral Caldwell's mother Peggy Caldwell, you and your husband ensured that he knew exactly what he was getting into when he decided 
to attend the United States Naval Academy and join the submarine force. Thank you for raising such an incredible son and for giving him up to our nation and the Navy that you devoted your life to supporting your husband's 30-year career on submarines as well, too. Thank you for your service, both of yours. Finally, I would like to recognize Admiral Caldwell's wife, Kimberly. Kim. For those in the audience who may not know, and it's already been mentioned, that Admiral and Mrs. Caldwell have known each other since they were two years old. And I was wondering, was there a PDA at the very first uh, <laughs> gathering? There was. Public display of affection, for those of you who may not know. From the very beginning, right? In the almost 43 years since you married shortly after Admiral Caldwell's graduation from the Naval Academy in 1981, you have been by his side. Your steadfast devotion and love for your husband as well as your dedication to our Navy, the submarine force, and naval reactors team is evident in everything that you do. And even at my first time you met Betty, she came home and said, boy, Kim is really a special lady. To recognize your many years of service to our sailors and their families, I'm honored to present you with this Navy Distinguished Public Service Award as part of today's ceremonies. Please come on up, Kim. Ms. Caldwell, if you would please join the Secretary of the Navy at yeah. the podium. The Secretary of the Navy will now present the Distinguished Public Service Award to Ms. Kimberly Caldwell for services set forth in the following citation. For Distinguished Public Service in support of the members of the United States Navy and their families from May 1981 to January 2024. In her role as a Navy spouse, Ms. Caldwell dedicated herself to improving the quality of life for our sailors and their families through extensive charity, work, mentorship, and leadership. Ms. Caldwell has widely traveled the United States home ports and abroad, extensively engaging service members and their families to understand the challenges of naval service while advocating effectively for improvements. She was a remarkably effective emissary for the United States Navy in countless engagements with public officials and foreign dignitaries, strengthening our important relationships worldwide and at home. Her contributions as a leader and a mentor to the wardrooms and spouse organizations across the Navy submarine force have been extraordinary. The Navy and the nation will remain forever grateful for her 42 years of selfless and dedicated service. Ms. Kimberly Caldwell's outstanding achievements and total dedication reflected credit upon herself and were in keeping with the highest traditions of the Department of the Navy. Signed, Carl Satoro, Secretary of the Navy. Admiral Caldwell, I know that you've always taken orders from Sink House, but it's only going to get worse from here on, so. <laughs> now, in closing, since I opened with an Admiral Rickover quote, I will close with still yet another. Quote, the great end of life is not knowledge, but action. I believe it is the duty of each of us to act as if the fate of the world depended on him or her, unquote. And recalled well for over 40 years, you have been a man of action. Our nation, our partners, and our allies, indeed the world, are better, safer because of your service. The future of naval reactors is bright because of your leadership. And we wish you fair winds and following seas in your next chapter. Again, it's been an honor for me to be here with you today. May God continue to bless the Caldwell family, the Houston family, our sailors, Marines, and their families stationed around the globe. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand uh, as the Secretary of the Navy will now present the Naval Unit Accommodation Award to Naval Reactors. The Secretary of the Navy takes pleasure in presenting the Navy Unit Accommodation to Naval Reactors for extremely meritorious service during assigned missions from 14 August 2015 to 31 March 2023. The Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program achieved 15 million miles steamed on nuclear power and 800 reactor years of safe operations, trained and qualified over 3,800 officers and 14,600 enlisted nuclear operators with a safety and reliability record that facilitated access of U.S. nuclear-powered warships to 150 ports and call in 5-0 countries. 
By spearheading the Trilateral United States Australia United Kingdom Initiative, Naval Reactors expertly laid the groundwork for delivery of nuclear submarine capability to Australia. Naval Reactors oversaw construction, testing, and delivery of USS Jordan Ford C-78, the largest and most capable U.S. warship of all time, and of 10 Virginia-class submarines, while also completing the propulsion plant design for the USS District of Columbia SSBN A-26 class submarines. Signed, Carl Satoro, Secretary of the Navy. The Secretary of the Navy will now present Admiral Caldwell with his Inator Award. So before we begin, this is something Admiral Caldwell insisted that I not do. <laughs> but since I outrank the head of the nuclear power program, um, I insist that we did this uh, because he deserves every single bit of it. Please read the citation. This is to certify that the President of the United States of America has awarded the Distinguished Service Medal, Gold Star, in lieu of third award to Admiral James Frank Caldwell, Jr., United States Navy, for exceptional meritorious and distinguished services in the performance of his duties of great responsibility from August 2015 to January 2024. Signed, Carl Satoro, Secretary of the Navy. Yes, please be seated. Mr. Secretary, uh, thank you so much for the award. The, the Navy Unit Accommodation Award is a special award. And uh, just to the Naval Reactors team, that's not a Frank Caldwell Award. That's your award. And so I'm going to go hand it to Chuck because I think he represents the team and make sure he has it. And uh, thank you very much for awarding Tim. Uh, that is a great award, and we're honored to receive it. And thank you for overriding me and presenting me my award. <laughs> but once again, I correct the record. Uh, the shirt was not for me. It's for Bill. <laughs> and I did say the great class of 1983, but it's the greater class of 1981. <laughs> Anyway, Mr. Secretary, it's been an honor. I hope to stay in contact with you. Thank you for your leadership. Hey, our final guest speaker is the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Lisa Franchetti. I have had the pleasure of knowing Lisa for many years. We first met on a selection board. Uh, I believe it was a commander's selection board about a decade ago. And I have to tell you, I was immediately impressed with her. The, her grasp of knowledge and the, and the functioning of the board, incredibly professional. I've never forgotten that. And I've been super impressed with her ever since. She has proven her leadership throughout her career, which has included command of USS Ross DDG-71, command of Desron-21, and command of Carrier Strike Groups 9 and 15. These are sea-going commands. That's what matters in our Navy. At the heart of it, she is a fleet operator, which she has proven, again, as the commander of US 6th Fleet and striking and support forces NATO. It's a complex environment. A lot going on over there, and she mastered it. It has been fantastic to watch her in her fleet roles and as our VCNO, Vice Chief of Naval Operations. I greatly appreciate her support of naval reactors. She will lead our Navy in this time of high consequence in this incredibly dangerous world, and she will make sure that our fleet is ready. Lisa, I'm glad you're at the helm, and I know I speak for the entire flag war room when we say are 100% behind you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our 33rd Chief of Naval Operations. Well, thank you very much, Frank, and again, thank you for the honor of having the opportunity to be here and be part of this amazing ceremony today. And uh, good morning, everyone, Secretary Granholm, Secretary Del Toro, Administrator Ruby, Chairman Courtney, a lot of professional staff members I see out there, fellow flag officers, our Navy sailors, our Navy civilians, ladies and gentlemen. Again, it's an incredible honor to be here with all of you today. 
And I know uh, Admiral Caldwell recognized our amazing Navy band. I also want to recognize our amazing Navy color guard and ceremonial guard. So if we could all give another round of applause for these professionals. Make everything so special. Earlier this morning, I did have the great privilege of promoting an incredible leader who you've heard much about already today, but I do want to give him one more shout out, an amazing leader, someone that I know we're thrilled to have at the helm for the next eight years, Admiral Bill Houston, our Navy's newest four-star admiral. Again, congratulations. <laughs> well, today is yet another day and another key milestone in the storied 75-year history of naval reactors, and I get to look right there at the banner that we all signed when we celebrated that 75 years of powering maritime dominance right up there. It's great to have you, Admiral Bowman, here uh, representing that great link in the chain of naval nuclear power, and it's amazing to be here and see you today to celebrate this great day with Admiral Caldwell and Admiral Houston. It's truly an amazing day for these two great leaders and for their families their friends, and all of our Navy teammates, our Naval Reactors teammates all around the world. Frank, thank you very much for your steady, zero-bubble leadership of Naval Reactors. The Naval Reactors director role may be designed for continuity, but I highly doubt that you or Kim thought that it was going to extend beyond eight years. <laughs> I am deeply grateful for your commitment, your willingness to stand up and stay on and support that Naval Reactors mission, and for the commitment of everyone in Naval Reactors. I'm going to talk a little bit about the team's work today, which I know is what Frank wanted me to focus on, but I do want to just take one minute to recognize Frank and, uh, and also his family. You know, as Frank wraps up a successful tour as the director of the Naval Nuclear Power Propulsion Program, he's also bookending a remarkable 43-year career of loyal service. So on behalf of all of those that you have served with over these many years, thank you for your engaged leadership at every level of command. Thank you for your uncompromising standards and stewardship of naval nuclear power. And most importantly, for me and many others in this room, thank you for your friendship, for your wise counsel, and for being a great shipmate over the years. It's your service, your contributions, and your legacy will be carried on in those that you have led and those that you have trained. But I know that you will be missed. We are indebted to you and to your family for your lifetime of service to our Navy and to our nation. I know that Frank would agree that none of us do this alone. It is our families and our loved ones that also serve alongside us and sacrifice a lot of times and things we don't even see. They have helped to make such a long and distinguished career possible. Again, I know other people already said thank you to the families, but I feel like I am a big fan of our families because I think they're the glue that holds our Navy together, and everything that we do is really possible thanks to them. So I also want to take my turn to recognize Frank's mom, Peggy Caldwell. Peggy, thank you for your support to our Navy and to the submarine community. It has been immeasurable and incredibly important. For more than 60 years from the start of your husband's career through Frank's, you've done so much for so many, and we thank you. It is really wonderful to see so many people from Frank's family here, your brother Andy, his wife Josie, brother David, your sister Janine, husband John, and all of your sons, uh, Adian and Donovan, and so many other family friends, classmates and shipmates, and of course, last but definitely not least, Kim. I'm so happy that we got to recognize you today, and I'm sorry that it made tears come to your eyes. <laughs> but you have been there from the beginning, through every adventure. I'm sure you long ago you stopped counting how many moves you made, and you've been there for every uncertainty. And not just for Frank, but for so many on our Navy team, for sailors, for our Navy civilians, and for all of our families. We are grateful for your tireless service and your sacrifice. It really is that strength that we all rely on. And Frank would tell you that it's the strength of the teams, it's the strength of that family, but it's also the strength of our big Navy family that brings us all success. 
It's what fuels a winning mindset. And that's precisely what we see when we look at what Frank and the Naval Reactors team has accomplished over these past eight years. So I want to take a moment to recognize that and share some of what they've been providing to our Navy and our nation during Frank's tenure. Over the past eight years, this team has enabled more than 15 million miles steamed on nuclear power in over 800 reactor years of safe operation. I've been talking about putting and keeping more players on the field, and Naval Reactors is helping to make that a reality every day. The Naval Reactors team was instrumental in the construction, testing, and delivery of our largest and most capable warship ever, the USS Gerald R. Ford. And as the Gerald R. Ford steams back to Norfolk after eight months of support in the crisis in Europe and in the Middle East, we know that naval reactors played an outsized role in their nuclear-powered success. And naval reactors is moving right ahead with our latest nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, the USS John F. Kennedy. In recent years, the team has played a leading role in the construction of 10 Virginia-class submarines and 11 more that are under construction. I look forward to getting all those players on the field. And they've also identified an innovative approach to refuel seven of our Los Angeles-class submarines. And if that weren't enough, the team completed propulsion plant design for our na nation's next strategic deterrence submarine, the Columbia-class. You help keep us on track to deliver the 40-plus-year reactor core and the innovative electric drive main propulsion motor. And you did this all while sustaining our current fleet of ballistic missile submarines. Besides all this great work the team has done for our Navy, they've worked aside our allies and partners too. And Frank, whether it was your shepherding of Pillars 1 and Pillar 2 of AUKUS with the United Kingdom and Australia, or one of your many trips to Japan, it's clear that this team emphasizes the importance of relationships and of people over platforms. Naval Reactors not only focuses on our ships and our subs, they are truly focused on our people. On Frank's watch, the Naval Reactors team overhauled our pipeline nuclear training program and trained and qualified more than 3,800 officers, 14,600 enlisted sailors, and 260 civilians. The team also worked hard to identify and then reduce redundant maintenance requirements turning over one and a half million hours back to the fleet. This team has demonstrated an unrelenting commitment to the highest of standards, and they have placed accountability and stewardship at the forefront of the nuclear power propulsion program. Frank, it's incredibly impressive. I'm so happy we're able to get this NUC done and present it to you and the whole team with you here at the helm. It's incredible to see what you've achieved over the last eight years over your leadership. There is so much to be proud of. And Bill, what an exciting time for you to be joining this Winnie team. As many of you know, Bill and I have had the chance to serve before. We got to serve together in Italy. But what you may not know is that I also served alongside his wife, Colleen, who herself is a successful career as a naval officer. So it's great to be serving again with Bill and Colleen and to be joined today by their amazing daughters, Lauren and Emily. I always used to tell Bill I needed some more Colleens. And again, this is a great team that we're getting here at the helm of Naval Reactors. I had a chance to meet with Bill's amazing family a little bit earlier at the promotion, but I did want to also take a minute to just recognize your contribution and your support and shaping of the Bill Clay over all of these years. To Bill's mom, Mumsy, thank you very much. You have so much to be proud of, of this wonderful family. Again, John, Paul, uh, your brother-in-law, Andy, Doug, Bill's nephew, Nick, and uh, your fiance, Yvonne, thank you very much for being here today. And we're really fortunate also to have Colleen's mom, Carol, here today. You've been right there for Bill. I do like to say, especially in a dual mill family, it takes a village, and, uh, and Bill, Bill's village was strong and it really made it all possible. So thank you very much to the, the, all of the Houston family, the combined team that made it all happen. How about a big round of applause for them and all you're about to do. Bill, I know you have many uh, flag officers here 
and a lot of other mentors here, as well as many around the world that are watching and cheering you on this day. I thank all of you for your hand, again, in molding that clay and making Bill Houston the leader that he is today. I could not be more happy for you and for your family and for our Navy. Your experience and leadership at all levels of our Navy submarine community and beyond has led you to where you are today. You are absolutely the right leader with the right experience at the right time to take the helm of Naval Reactors. And I look forward to seeing all that this team will accomplish under your leadership. So as I wrap up today, let me just say a big thank you to the Naval Reactors team gathered today and those that you represent. America's warfighting Navy remains the most powerful Navy in the world thanks to the work you do every single day. We will continue to operate forward to preserve the peace, respond in crisis, and win decisively in war if called to do so. That's because of the people in this room and that great work, your commitment, your energy, and your dedication to our Navy and to our nation. Frank, we are gonna miss you. Bravo Zulu for a job incredibly well done. I wish you and your family all the best as you close the chapter on this part of the journey, open up the new one and chart the next course. We can't wait to see what that looks like for you and I know that we are all gonna stay in touch. And to Bill, I have the utmost confidence in your ability to lead this team and there's no doubt that Naval Reactors is in good hands. Thank you very much and I look forward to working with you. Thanks everybody. Okay, folks, it's my turn. And I know I've already talked a lot, and Bill is thinking, hey, I thought this was a fast-moving train. <laughs> I've got some stops to make, so please indulge me for just a few more minutes. I want to thank our speakers again. It's an honor to have you here, and, and thank you so much for your wonderful remarks about me, my family, about Bill, Bill's family, and the Naval Reactors team. A few administrative remarks just real quickly here. I hope you'll join Bill and me and our families across the street for a reception. We have food, beer, wine, plenty of cake. Please come say hello to us and chat a little bit. And then there is over there, uh, I will have a coffee table book uh, entitled The Navy. I would love if you'd pick a page and sign it. Please make it appropriate, and I'd love to be able to have that in my collection. Is that for the class of 81? Uh, yes, sir, I, I take that back. <laughs> Hey, I feel very fortunate when I think about the events in my life and the people who have influenced me. I was born into a great family, a great submarine family. My mom and dad raised us with a passion for the Navy, the Naval Academy, all Navy sports, and all things Roger Staubach. That's true, America's team. Uh, the, uh, the foundation was very strong. Like all Naval families, we traveled a lot, and for the Caldwells, our cross-country trips were epic. Imagine this, three young boys, my younger sister, a large German Shepherd mix, a minor bird, if you can believe it or not, and two cats roaming around a Pontiac station wagon. <laughs> it was really fun. It was equipped with full aftermarket air conditioning, and my father had rigged these curtains on the side that were, were modeled after submarine bunk curtains. Did, <laughs> did he make those? I think he did, right? He was a seamstress. He was really good. We were experts at sneaking the dog and the cats and the bird into a motels that didn't allow pets. I'm not sure I'm supposed to say that. <laughs> hey, we laughed a lot. We were taught respect and we were expected to serve. My two brothers served. Andy was 83. David was 84. Jeannie married a Marine. And today she is active in church and teaches. I'm so proud of every one of you. Now, I married a Navy girl. She was born in Japan in a CEC family, and here's what I would tell you about Kim. She is interested in everyone. She is ready to talk to anyone <laughs> for as long as you need. Uh, her, she has time for everyone and anything. She loves the Navy, and she especially loves naval reactors. If it can be discovered, fixed, framed, or finished, Kim will know where and how to get it done, including the military discount or better, how to get there, the shop hours, what traffic lanes you need to be in to avoid various legs, uh, on various legs to make the most efficient time and to avoid speed cameras. 
And it is a constant source of interest to me and the fascinating things that Kim will find. And I mean this as a compliment when I say living with Kim is like being in a, a national public radio show. <laughs> because it goes like this. The conversation usually starts and immediately I think I'm not the least bit interested in this. <laughs> and then a half hour later I am completely captivated and I can't stop listening. She is a great storyteller. Uh, Kim, thank you for everything. You've always kept it interesting. We're off to the next adventure. I love you, and congratulations on your medal. Really well deserved. <laughs> now, in Kim's family, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. It fell right under the tree. All those things I talked about with Kim, they're a reflection of my in-laws. Meet Mrs. Apple, Mr. Tree, Mrs. Tree. <laughs> my in-laws have been my biggest fans. Thank you for your love and your absolute support of me and Kim. Now, rounding out my family, I have an amazing sisters and brothers-in-laws. I have cousins all over the place. I have lots of nieces and nephews. If you're related to me be via blood or marriage or even same name, Cash, raise your hand, please, so I can see who's here. Okay, very good, and there's a couple trickled in, but great to have you here. Now, being raised in a Navy family means not being raised by only your family, but by your father's shipmate's family, right? Okay? I've been corrected and taught and mentored by Rear Admiral Retired Jerry and Ann Holland. I have also received light counseling from Mary Jo Maloney. I'll use her previously, uh, previous name. I was an 06, by the way, which proved that you're never too old to be mentored by a submarine spouse. And Janet, formerly Butterworth. Janet, did you make it? Are you in here? Did you make it? Good to see you back there. Janet and, and her family played a role in our lives, and they play a role today. Kim and I have been privileged to get to know your children, and we are growing closer to them. And I will add to this list the Ransoms, the Wyatts, the Larios, the Bellises, and many, many more. All of you were part of my memories, and all have shaped the person that I am today, and have set the standard for what it means to be in a Navy family. Now, in my Navy career, I've been supported and inspired by an incredible group of classmates from the Naval Academy uh, 81, as well as 8th Company. Several are here today, and I'm honored that you took the time to be here. I would also be remiss if I didn't recognize my classmates from the Naval Postgraduate School. These are some of the most professional, most outstanding officers I've ever served with. And I've been consistently inspired by the officers of the Submarine Force, Flags, and Senior Executives. They are so incredibly talented and visionary. It is not uncommon for me to be in a meeting and say, how the heck did I get in there with these really bright people? They are really amazing. But there are three officers that I want to call out that really shaped me as a leader as I was coming up. And they're going to be surprised if I mention their names. The first is Captain Kevin Reardon. He was my first XO on Boston. He was my CO on my second boat, Alabama. Kevin, you influenced me in a way that is profound. There is nothing that we did not examine or explore on that boat. You pushed us to operate, to learn, and to be confident, and that confidence is exactly what Naval Reactors wants our folks to do, to be confident in operating the ship. I have toured countless ships as the director, and every time I do, I think of the things you taught me, and I try to pass those on to our chiefs and officers today. You and Sue set the bar so high, Hey, the second, and so we are forever indebted, Kevin. Where are you? I know you're in here somewhere. I saw you earlier. Okay. All right, Kevin, thanks. Holy cow, how'd you get up there? We didn't get you a seat. <laughs> He's tough. Hey, the second is Captain Ken Jordan, formerly at Pack Fleet. Now, Ken is a really interesting guy, and I do not think I'd be here today without Ken's influence. He, he was a surface warfare officer. He exploded my little periscope view of the world. We worked on fleet issues, joint issues, and science and technology issues, and way more. He was tough. He taught me how to think. He taught me how to write. And he taught me how to engage at the flag level. And the final is Rear Admiral Doug McEnany. I mentioned Doug because when you work with Doug, what you see is energy in motion and passion and courage. I've worked for him twice. It was fun. It was fast. It was rewarding and I always knew he had my back. And finally, I'm also proud of all the sailors and chief petty officers who taught me and served with me. 
They are the real American heroes, and I've honestly lived in all of the sailors every day throughout my career, and I hope that in some small way my service reflects their service. Now, I joined the Navy to command a submarine. That's really where I thought my journey would end. I never ever imagined that I would have additional stops on the train, like at Devron 12, or at Submarine Group Command, or Sub PAC. These are jobs that all submariners want, okay? And somehow I was very fortunate enough to have the privilege to have these responsibilities. But truthfully, all of that pales to the incredible fortune that I've had to be able to serve here as the Director of Naval Reactors for the last eight years. For that, I owe thanks to all the previous directors, their faith in me, their wise counsel, and tremendous support. Admiral DeMars, Admiral Bowman, Admiral Donald, Admiral Richardson, they've been mentors, all of them. And I'll highlight, Admiral Bowman, you served during a time when you protected the Corps. You kept us strong and kept us going. We're building on that foundation today. Admiral Donald has been involved in all the detailing that I've been uh, in for a flag officer, and Admiral Richardson has been a great mentor to me throughout my senior part of my career. To work here at Naval Reactors is to work with the very brightest, talented, and innovative and dedicated people in the United States Navy. We have, as Admiral Rickover did, the best engineers, logisticians, supply officers, CEC officers, lawyers, JAGs, administrative professionals, and many more. In fact, to get ready for the new director, I, I looked at the things we'd accomplished in eight years. And it's very easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day grind and think about what you're doing. But when you step back and look at it, the accomplishments are astounding. And the list is too long to, to recite here. I'll mention a few of them. We are supporting the largest ship construction, nuclear-powered warship construction rate that we've had in decades. We delivered Ford to the fleet. You delivered Ford to the fleet. We had to battle through many first-of-the-class issues. We solved those issues with eye-watering, fast-paced, world-class technical solutions. And I mean that. Can't tell you what they are, but they are world-class. <laughs> we supported full ship shock trials, and we supported the ship's maiden voyage that occurred in this time of very, a lot of trouble out there in the world. We battled through and solved some core construction uh, manufacturing issues for a 40-year reactor core that is absolutely astounding if you know anything about reactor design. And the electric motor challenges on Columbia, we battled through those, and all of that is non-trivial. We completely modernized our initial training pipeline, the curriculum, the platforms the, that are more training ships for those of you who know who the, what those are, and impressive, really impressive, immersive trainers, all setting the baseline for the next generation trainer which will, for the first time in our program, not rely on a critical reactor for training new operators. Only possible because of the fidelity of the trainers. We've recapitalized and we've decommissioned and we're working on our vital infrastructure at our Department of Energy sites with many innovative ideas and approaches. This is not just technology, it's figuring out how to do it better, how to do it differently. And the team is stepping up our investments in research and development and that research and development is targeting not only the future fleet, but the current fleet. How can we make it better? We're supporting our UK and Australian partners in AUKUS. You've heard about that. We're helping our industry partners ramp up. And in some cases, we have been in the center of the transformation of a culture and a factory floor uh, business case. It is hard work. It takes uh, passion. It takes commitment. It takes just a, a number of engagements. But I will tell you, there are some leaders in industry out there who would tell you they are better for their interaction with the Naval Reactors team. There are many, many more, but front and center is our Naval Reactors team's absolute commitment to the operating fleet. This building lives for the fleet. We will be here to solve problems when we need to. We have supported some of the longest deployments in our Navy's history during the COVID pandemic and kept the fleet operating. Really proud of that. Now, enabling all of that is the peop are the people here at Naval Reactors. They are our competitive advantage. As Admiral Rickover said, people, not organizations, get things done. I will call out the section heads as a group. I, do, I wanted to, early on, start naming people, but I realized I just can't do that. In your program, there's a list of Naval Reactors section heads and Naval Reactors field representatives. Uh, the, there, are, there are many others who have served in these roles and moved on. This is a snapshot in time of our current leadership team. Uh, the real strength of NR is in the section heads. 
Each one of these section heads is a master of their area of responsibility. They are passionate, they are knowledgeable, they are technical experts. Like Admiral Rickover wanted, these leaders are not afraid to speak their mind, including to the Admiral, as in, Admiral, I don't like what you just said there, I don't think it's right, I recommend we change it, and there's how we need to do it better. That's what we need, that's what Admiral Rickover wanted, and we respect that, and that needs to continue. Now, I also wanted to call out many other individuals on the team, but I'm only gonna call out two. The toughest job at Naval Reactors by far is the Deputy Director for Naval Reactors. Okay, this is leading, mentoring, and challenging your peers. And I have been fortunate enough to work for two exceptional folks, Mr. Steve Troutman and Mr. Chuck Taylor. They are, yes, they deserve a round of applause. They are standard bearers for the program. They bring awesome experience. They have provided me invaluable insights and counsel. Both have wonderful families. I thank each one of them for stepping up. They're not always popular, but they know how to do business and do it well. And you folks will never know the depth of my appreciation for everything that you've done. And then there is the rest of the NR team, these folks that are manning the rafters here, the rails. Bill, you're gonna have many events in this uh, venue and you're gonna love it. It's such a warm, welcoming venue. You'll have families in and all kinds of things. We've actually had the Navy cheerleaders in here. We had the Navy mascot goat, not the real goat, but the mascot. <laughs> we actually made a pyramid. That was not a really good choice, but it was fun. <laughs> but the rest of this Naval Reactors team is amazing. This is the very best part of my job, to work with these folks that you see around here. These are America's national treasure. I wanna call out one thing. In your program are the Naval Reactors mission core, uh, mission vision and core values. These were created by the team, not Frank Caldwell, but by our team. And they are really spot on. People, not organizations, get things done. Technical excellence always, integrity in all circumstance, and challenge what's possible. I have to tell you, those words live in this building. There isn't a week that goes by that I don't mention one of these. There isn't a day that goes by that people aren't talking about these all the time. And I really, really mean it when I say that. That Navy unit accommodation, that is unique and special, and that is all you, the people in this headquarters. All of these things I've said about the Naval Reactors team also extend to our prime, two prime contractors that are very close to us. The Navy Nuclear Laboratory team, led by Tom Sambol. Tom, where are you? Good to see you. And BPMI, led by Miss Barb Stanish. Barb, good to see you. These folks, they're like us. They speak the same language. They care about the same things. They're brutally honest. We could not do our job without them. And every trip I've made to your sites has been amazing. Bill, you're gonna love it, love it and you're gonna be inspired by it. Now, one of the things the team did for me was they created an eight-year framework looking ahead. And the team, when you look ahead at that, what you see is, uh, I like to think about it this way. We are on an incline of improving performance, bringing ships to the fleet and more and more. Bill, you are gonna be in an even steeper part of the incline. And it's super exciting. And I have to tell you, I am envious of what you're gonna get to do. But you are exactly the right leader. Your wealth of experience, your expertise, Colleen at your side and your wonderful family. Bill, you are gonna to start today the eight-year narrative and I will be cheering you all the way. Congratulations, well-deserved. Now finally, I, I think uh, continuing with the theme of being fortunate, I'm fortunate to have bo been born in this great country. It has been an amazing honor to serve. Know this, that the freedoms we enjoy are underpinned by a strong national defense. I will end with words from Admiral Rickover. These are the words he spoke upon the occasion of commissioning Ohio. The burdens of a strong national defense are heavy, but those who wish the blessings of liberty must accept the fatigue of supporting it. Front and center is our United States Navy that supports the freedom and the freedom of our allies, partners, 
and all those who wish to use the seas peacefully and live in a free world. The reality is this. The Navy that we benefit from today is founded on hard work and the investment begun years, if not decades ago. A strong Navy is imperative for our nation's success. A strong Navy needs constant investment and commitment during peace so that it will be ready and available when we need it. Investment in our Navy and our aircraft carriers and submarines is tangible evidence, as Admiral Rickover used to say, tangible evidence that we are prepared to defend our freedoms. And the cornerstone that is the Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program, a main mast in the storm. And our team, never forget that we work on real things, machines that go to sea, machines that carry our precious sailors. Never forget. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, Bill, let's get it done. I will now read my orders. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the reading of the orders and transfer of command. From the Secretary of Defense to Admiral James F. Caldwell, Jr., your request to retire has been approved by the Secretary of Defense. Effective 1 March 2023, you will be transferred to the retired list in the grade of Admiral, detached in January 2024 as Director of Naval Reactors. Admiral Houston, I am ready to be relieved. I will now read my orders from Chief of Naval Operations to Admiral Houston, subject CNO Order 3543. When relieved, detached from Commander Submarine Forces and report for duty as Director, Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program. Admiral Caldwell, I am ready to relieve you. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Bill Houston, the eighth director of Naval Reactors. Secretary Granholm, Secretary Del Toro, uh, CNO, it's uh, my great honor to be the eighth director of Naval Reactors. Thank you for honoring us with your presence today. Um, I know we've been here for a very long time. My daughter is timing me. I will be very brief. I would rather say my thanks in person at the reception, and it is going to be a world-class reception. Air Caldwell has assured us that. I have to say a few thanks. So first, to Air Caldwell and Kim, um, thank you for such strong foundations that you're turning over this wonderful assignment to Colleen and myself, so thank you very much. To the Naval Reactor staff, um, you don't do a change of command every eight years. It's a little longer. It's tough to put this together. Maybe we don't do them that long because they're so, uh, that often because they're so long, but it's super well done. Mr. Gilmore, uh, Captain Carter, um, the entire team, uh, Mr. Harrington, this takes a lot to do. In the middle of Christmas, stand down. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
um, to my friends and my shipmates, the people in the audience, the people watching us online, I could not have made it here without you. And many of you know that very, very well. And I just thank you so much for uh, being here today. Uh, to my family, many of which are here, and we've uh, talked about them all, I'm just going to say um, John, Norma, um, Paul, Eve, who's not here, Andy, Mumsy, Doug, Carol, um, as Airmo Franchetti said, dual military, um, moving all the time. I'm just glad we're staying put for eight years, and Colleen is especially <laughs> happy. Um, Colleen, Emily, Lauren, um, I won't mention the little guy, the grandson, River, those of you who know me, takes a big part of my life. Uh, he would have run out of here like an hour and a half ago, uh, <laughs> and he would have hotwired all your cars. Uh, um, just thank you. You are my, uh, if you want to hear stories about um, getting my crap together, uh, they have kept me in line the whole time and kept me very com uh, humble. And I will tell you, they will tell you all the stories over at the reception if you're willing to stick around long enough. And l lastly, I do want to thank the Naval Reactors, and that's the directors, that's the organization, it's past, present, and future. And I want to talk about what it represents, how we celebrate the tenacity and vision of then Captain Hyman G. Rickover and the founders of the Naval Reactors organization. They took Nautilus from a thought to underway on nuclear power in seven years. They take the best, and Secretary Granholm, you said it very well, but I will tell you, interagency working, Department of Energy, Department of Defense, Department of Navy, uh, National Nuclear Security Administration, putting those organizations together and having them work well is exceptionally difficult. And there is no organization in government that does it better than naval reactors. And I just am amazed that they do that. And as we watch what naval reactors and we celebrate what naval reactors has done for the last 75 years, I will highlight we are a free nation because of our security, which is dependent on our maritime arm, the Navy, as Ermo Franchetti would call it, the away team. And when you look at that away team, this organization enables 70% of our nuclear deterrent to be carried on Ohio-class submarines powered by nuclear power, most survivable, most flexible, most adaptable leg of our nuclear triad. When we have a crisis, the president asks for where are the carrier strikers, the carriers powered by nuclear propulsion. And if you look at our apex predators, the SSN force, that is enabled by nuclear power. That is resident in this building for 75 years. <clears throat> and it's a testimony to what this organization founded by then Captain Rickover has enabled. This organization founded 75 years ago has given us that asymmetric advantage. And while I will be the first director not interviewed by Admiral Rickover. I'm sure he is watching over me right now as a Conley gentleman <laughs> and telling me to get on with it. <laughs> I vow to continue the histor historical performance of excellence in everything they do. Thank you. May God continue to bless this nation, the Departments of Energy and the Navy, and the Navy Nuclear Propulsion Program. Guests, please remain standing for the benediction. Let us close in prayer. Now with the change of command finished, the transfer of authority complete. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace today and always. Amen.
Bosun, post the Cyboys. Cyboys. Horse, horse. Cyboys, halt. Center, base. Animal call, well, sir. The watch is relieved. We have the watch. Bosun, stand by to pipe the side. Shipmate going ashore. Admiral James Frank Caldwell, Jr., United States Navy, retired, and Miss Caldwell, departing. <whistles> Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony. Guests, please remain seated for departure of members of the official party. Please join us for a reception in the HM at NAPSI headquarters across the street. Ushers are standing by to direct you to the reception area.